in this video i'm going to show you the basics and how to get started with using adobe after effects welcome back to the channel my name is cjam and in today's video as i mentioned earlier we're going to be getting started with using adobe after effects and if you haven't used after effects before it's totally fine it's nothing to be worried about and even though it may seem complicated and it may seem overwhelming when you just get into the app all you need to know is where to find the things that you need and trust me it will get a lot easier now think of it this way after effects is basically photoshop for video editing it's that powerful it's literally just as powerful as photoshop but just for video that's the easiest way i can explain it to you it's just so cool and i really want to help you guys get started with using it and before we get started i'll put links in this video's description as to where you can get after effects so be sure to check out those resources in the description below and what i primarily want to show you today is how to use the scale feature the position feature and the opacity feature in after effects all right so here we are in after effects and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and click new project because we want to start with a new project and then i'm just going to go ahead and save my project I'm just going to go ahead and go to file and then save as and let's name it lspv after effects tutorial one right and then the first thing I want to do is I want to drag in the After Effects logo because I want to show you guys how to use an image as well as um, text, right? So all we're going to be using that's external is the After Effects logo. So let me just go ahead and drag that in and I have it right here. I'm just going to drag it in and then we can go ahead and start. So what I want to do first is I want to go up top here to composition, right? Because that's the first thing I want to do. We want to create a composition that we're going to be working in, right? So let me go ahead and hit composition and then new composition, or you could have clicked control and N and then I want to name this LSPV after effects tutorial one. So what we named earlier was the project and now we're naming our composition, right? So you can also go ahead and choose the background color of your project, right? You can go ahead and choose white if you want or black, whichever color you want, that's fine. And you can choose your frame rate, you know, um, I normally choose 30 frames per second, which is fine, but you can do 60, however many frames per second you want based on your project. And you can also go ahead and choose the duration of your project for this one. 20, sec 20 seconds is quite fine. We're not going to do anything um, more dramatic than that. So let's just go ahead and click OK. So the first thing I want to show you is I just want to give you a breakdown of the workspace. So we have our project here where we'll have all our assets that we bring in to use in Illustrator. And then you have our timeline here, which is obviously you'll see your entire sequence played out here, right? This is where you'll cut and edit and do all your fantastic stuff, right? And then you have your composition here that we just made. And then we'll have all our controls and effects over here, right? And you can always change your workspace by going to window and then workspace, or you can just click this little strip right here to change the view of your workspace, right? So now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let me just go ahead and drag in my Illustrator logo down on my timeline. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and just write some text, right? Let me hit T or control and T, sorry. And then let me just write um, after effects. And right now the text is white, so you're not seeing it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use this eyedropper tool over here under my character tab. And then I'm just going to pick at the blue, right? just so it's the same blue as the After Effects. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control and S. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Control and R to show my rulers, right? And then, or I could have went to View, and then I could have just hit Show Rulers here, right? All right, so now that I have my text in and my logo in, let me just go ahead and select the logo layer here. Let me turn off the text for now. 
and when my video is started or has started i just want the logo to like pop in on screen right but first let me actually use the text instead of the logo right let me turn off the logo let me select my text layer and if you look right here you see that the anchor point is not in the middle right this little dot right here should be in the middle let me just go ahead and hit alt control and home and you see the anchor point is now in the middle and then if i hit control and home the after effects will move to the middle right uh, to the middle of my composition it will be perfectly aligned right now what i want to do is i want the after effects to just like pop up on the screen at the beginning of the video right let me just go ahead and show you how to do that wait let me drag out some guides first just from my rulers here i'm just dragging out and adjusting just so i have some guides to like know where i want my elements to stop just so my design is like perfectly aligned all over and all i'm entering here is just um, some measurements because i know that my composition is 1920 by 1080 pixels you know hd my first guide here is like 100 pixels from the edge same for all of them 100 pixels from the edge right and when you get over here 100 pixels from the edge of 1920 is 1920 minus 100 which is 1820 so if i right click on this guide and click edit position you'll see that it's 1820 pixels and the same for the bottom 100 from 1080 pixels high is 980 right so let's continue so i have my after effects here in the middle right and i want it to pop up on the screen but what i want to do next is i want to create some duplicates because i have a plan for them after the fact right so let me just go ahead and select it in my layers here Control and c to copy Control and v to paste Control and v to paste i think i need about four of them so let me just paste it one more time and then want to just turn off a couple of them let me just turn off three of them and let me just use this main one right so what i want to do is i want this main one to pop up on screen i can just change the color of all the others so that they're different by just clicking on this colored box here just so they all have a different look in my layers right here right so you can distinguish each of them all right so what i'm going to do next is i'm just going to go ahead and hit s for the scale feature you'll see i got a drop down right here and then i want the scale right now it's at 100 100 right and i'm going to just click on this little stopwatch right here which is the keyframe and that's going to make something happen at that particular point on that particular frame in the timeline right but i want it to come back to 100 percent but I want it to start like not on the screen, like really, really small, right? So it's almost invisible. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to the beginning of my timeline here, and then I'm going to change the scale to zero, right? If I drag it all the way to zero, it gets really small till it's invisible, and then it's not there. And then let me hit Control and S to save. And then if I press play, you'll see that it pops up on the screen, right? see that that's pretty cool that's what i want but it's taking a little bit too long so if i were to like see that if i were to like move these two keyframe points closer together the, what it's doing will happen faster right let me show you see that if i move them even closer together you see it literally just just pops up on the screen right let me show you one more time all right and that's it's okay that's what i want right and then after that i want this to just move up a little bit this after effects i want it to move up a little bit right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hit p but first i'm gonna go back to this keyframe so when it pops up on the screen i want to hit p for my position effects and then I want to hit a keyframe because right at this moment, I want something else to happen, right? So I'm just going to hit the keyframe stopwatch. And then I have my position here. But what I want to happen next is I want this After Effects to move up top. And I want another one to move to the bottom, right? So let me just go ahead and turn back on another After Effects that I have here. And then I'm just going to make the starting point be right at this particular point as well. See that? so what i'm gonna have happen is the top one one of them is gonna move up one is gonna move down so let me just move further down in the timeline 
because if I were to change the keyframe at this same point, nothing will happen, right? Because it's on the same point. So let me just move further along in the timeline and let me just adjust the position by holding shift and using my up arrow key to go about one, two, three, four, five, six, about six spaces up. Ooh, that's about 60 pixels. And let me do the same thing for the one that I want to move to the bottom. And let me hit P for my position. And then let's go to the same point on the timeline, because if you look right here, you see that there's two keyframes on this one, but there's only one on this one, right? So I need to make it move to the bottom. So let's go ahead and hold shift and or down arrow key while our move tool is selected, right? V for the move tool. And then let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And now let's go back to the beginning and see what happens. But let's save this control and S to save. See that? How cool is that? It literally came in and just like split into two. See that? How cool is that? That's really nice. And what I can do even more is I can remember I have two more After Effects that I had duplicated, right? What I can do is just turn them on and then let them start at this same point, but then let them move out to the left and right, right? So let me just go ahead and select this pink one here. Let's hit P for position. Let's start the stopwatch here because I want it to move here. And then let's move, let's adjust, let's move it over. You can use the X and Y coordinates on the position right here, or I can just use my move tool with the shift key held down and just like manually do it, right? So let me just go ahead and go over about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's taking a whole lot of time. Hold on, let me put a guide here. Let me put a guide here. That way I can snap it to the guide in the middle. All right, 540. All right, let's just move this over so it touches the edge of that guide. And then let's move do the same thing on the other one. So I'm going to the beginning, hitting the position keyframe and then going to the other point and let's just move this one so remember the pink after effects is already moved to the side right on the left let's move this other one the purple one in our layers over to the right right so let's go ahead and just move it over to the right so it snaps to the guide and if your elements aren't snapping to your guide on your composition you can just go ahead and go to view and then hit snap to guides right and let's see what we have here Let's go back to the beginning and hit play. What's happening? Oh, one of them is off. All right, let's see what it's doing. See that? How cool is that? And how fast is that? That's really cool. But here's what I want to do. I want to leave a little bit of space in the middle so that my After Effects logo can literally just pop out in the middle, right? So let's just go ahead and give it some more space so i'm selecting the one on the left right let's change the color of these let me what can i do where's the after effects logo let me just move the after effects logo down right or better yet let me just change the color of these two after effects text to like black or something right or to a darker version of this color that we're using what do you guys think black i mean black works right let me see what I got. Uh, mm, what do you guys think? I think purple, black. Um, I think black is fine. I think black is fine. <laughs> it shouldn't be this hard to choose a color, but I really like all the colors that I'm seeing here. Yeah, but let's just use black to keep it neutral or like a gray. Some kind of gray like, all right? That's fine. That's what 15, 15, 15 is a hex code. Let's do the same thing. Let's select the purple after effects as in purple in the layers. And then let me hit my eyedropper tool and just pick the gray from this other one. And it will give me the same gray, right? Now I can just go ahead and select both of them on the left and right and just move them over a couple of pixels, right? Or a couple hundred pixels. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just rock this over to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's fine. That should be fine. Let's move this other one over 
seven paces in that direction, which is 70 pixels while holding shift and my move tool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's, let's just hit P to make sure that I did the right thing and I did not. What happened was, if you look here, you can hit the plus or minus keys to like zoom in on your timeline. And what happened here is I actually moved it again, but I should have moved it on the keyframe. You see, because I wasn't on the keyframe, there's a movement that happened afterwards, but that's not what I want. I want it to happen all at once. So let me just undo that. Let me just undo that and then come back on my original keyframe and then just move it over, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then same one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Let's see what we have from the beginning. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, obviously you can fine tune this and make it as perfect as you want. I'm just showing you how to use the position and the scale. We did scale already with the first After Effects text and we just did position. Now I'm just gonna show you um, opacity, right? We're gonna make the, the opacity just means the visibility of whatever element you have in your project and the opacity, if you turn it down, the element will get more and more transparent until it becomes invisible. And if you turn it all the way up to 100%, obviously you'll be able to see the element, right? So all I'm gonna do is just play it out one more time. That's cool. And I want my After Effects logo to pop up right here in the middle. So I'm probably going to have to move the top ones up some more. So let me go ahead and find the keyframe, which is right here, I believe. Let's hit P. You have to select each layer and hit the control that you want. So I want P on this pink layer, I have to hit P. I want the position controls on the other one, I have to hit P, I have to hit P, right? Just to show me the controls that I want. So let me just go ahead and hit P. I'm seeing all the position controls. Let me turn on my After Effects logo. And then let me just move this up so it's touching like the top of the After Effects logo, or it's just above. How much times did I move that just now? I wasn't even counting. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's move the bottom one or the other one down six times, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, I'm just holding shift and using my down arrow while my move tool up here is selected, right? And to know what I can do is while these black ones are moving out to the side, what I can do is I can make them, as they're moving out, just make them get bigger to like fill this gap right here, right? See that? All right, so while they're moving from here to here, I want the black After Effects text to like increase in size and that's what, scale, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and hit S for my scale features and Remember the keyframes are at the same position, right? So what I can do is go to the beginning here, hit scale for this keyframe, come here because this is where I want it to like scale up and get really big, right? So I'm just gonna increase the scale like so until it it's like the same height as the After Effects logo, right? See that? And then I can go back and press P because we're on the same point, right? and I can just move it over some more now, right? So as it's moving over, wait, let me just snap it to the guide and then move it over to about there. So as it's moving over, it will just like, just get really big. Let's see what we have. Let me turn off the After Effects logo. See that? So what I'm gonna do to the right one is same thing, right? So if I turn on the After Effects logo, you can see that it's like perfect, right? So let's just go on the other one, this one over here. Let's look at the scale for this one. All right, so it's scaled up to 276%, right? And this one, top one here is still at 100%. So what I'm gonna do is, because I know that, I'm just gonna right click on, not right click, I'm just gonna click on scale from this big one that we have here and copy it, Control and V, I'm copying that settings. Going back to the beginning of my After Effects, the other one, the purple one on top, this one right here, 
and I'm just going to go ahead and paste, click on the scale again on that one and just paste the scale settings and you can see I got the keyframes right here. Let me control and Z to undo. You see there was no keyframes here before. Control shift and Z to redo and you see I got the scale positions. Now let's play it and see what we have. See that? But I think I still need to move it over because remember we had moved the other one over because it got bigger, right? Obviously when you increase the size, it will throw off our position alignments, right? So let's just go ahead and select it and just move it over to the side. Let me snap it to my center guide and then let me just move it over about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's what I did, right? I think that's what I did. <laughs> now let's play it and see what we have. But first, remember I wanted to do the opacity to the After Effects logo. So while it's moving, right? I want the After Effects logo to just pop up in the middle, right? So let's start the After Effects logo like right here, right? So about right here, I want it to pop up, which is on the same line as all these keyframes. I want it to pop up from zero to a hundred, like really quick, right? So let me just go ahead and hit S for my scale options, clicking my keyframe. And then let's go further down in the timeline. And let me click the, the keyframe point again. And let me go back to the first one and just change that to, to zero, right? So I want when it's all moved out of the way, I want the After Effects logo to pop in. Let's play it and see what we got. All right, so I want the After Effects logo to start moving in a little bit quicker, right? So let me select it and move it backwards in the timeline so it starts coming in a bit quicker, right? So about there, I mean, it's overlapping and it's fine if it's overlapping, it's not making or breaking my design, but let me just adjust it a little bit. All right, so as it all moves, the After Effects just like, right? All right, but I think I want, all right, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Let me try making the black After Effects, the dark gray ones. Let's have them come on screen a little bit later to, to by selecting both of them and moving them down to the timeline. And let's see what we have. Nice. I think I like this better. Let me see it. All right, but because I moved it, I have to move the After Effects logo pop up as well, right? Um, let me see. Perfect. And the opacity feature that I wanted to show you is if I were to go ahead and hit T, right? T would, that's so cool. T would give me my opacity feature, right? If I wanted to, I can just hit T on the After Effects logo and you see it says opacity right here. If I hit the keyframe and go to zero, you'll see it disappeared, right? And if I bring that back to the beginning, I can let it like fade in. Let's, I brought it back to the begin, no, beginning. Now let me go further in the timeline and then bring that opacity figure to 100%. So it's fully visible by the time it comes on screen, right? Now let's see what we have. See that? But because it's all moving, you see that it's like faded. But because it's all moving so fast, you're not noticing it, right? And if I wanted, I can do this in reverse where I can just have all of these elements opacity start at zero like or be a hundred percent sorry at the end and then bring them down to zero and that will let them all just fade away off screen right let me go ahead so you can see the after effects there see it's fading in as it's coming in right it's fading in but let, here's what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna add the opacity to all of them after the fact that way they all fade out right so, you know what would be cool if after the After Effects logo pops up on screen, it just pushes out a couple more of these blue ones. That would be cool, right? All right, so let me just find those blue ones. Mm, where do I have it? I have it here. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead because I don't want this to move from where it is right now. I'm just going to hit my add, I'm just going to hit my keyframe button to add a keyframe right here 
and it's going to add you see that look right here look what's happening right here it's adding a keyframe button see that and then i'm going to do it to the other one here because i want the same position as the keyframe before it i don't want it to move right no i can go further down in the timeline after it gets after the after effects logo pops up and then i'm going to move these two blue ones this one i'm going to duplicate it and then move it up and i'm going to duplicate this one and move it down right so it looks like the after effects logo pops up and then like pushes out some more words right so let's go ahead and duplicate them first Control and c Control and v let's hit p for my position options and then i'm just going to choose the top one right here right is the top one or the bottom one and then i'm just going to go ahead and move down in the timeline and then hit the position to like but i want it to happen quickly like as the after effects pops up on the screen it's just gonna like push them down right so move to selected shift and my down arrow key one two three four five six seven and let's do the same thing for the top one all right let's move it up seven times or 70 pixels one two three four five six seven and then let's go over here to my character tab and just pick the gray from this and pick the gray from this and now let's go to the beginning control and s to save everything and then let's see what we have <laughs> that is so cool let me just um okay okay yeah it's revealing the um it's revealing the after effects logo the one more time one more time remember i didn't have to make this get this big i'm just showing you like how you can use the scale feature right all right so that's a pretty cool animation for our first time in after effects what do you guys think think what do you guys think and it's pretty straightforward it's just scaling it's just positioning and it's just moving your um your time indicator in your timeline just moving it to different points and then adding a different keyframe and changing changing the keyframe values that way something different happens so when you go to a point in your timeline you turn you click the stopwatch add a keyframe right your values are already set then you move your time indicator down to the timeline again and then you change your values that way something different is happening at that second keyframe that's all there is to it here's what i could do do you think i can let these big ones get back small and then just like change them just like do have two of them here instead of this one big one what do you guys think let's go ahead and touch the scale change it back to 100 um position and then move it back in right and there we'll have the word effects and then this one as well scale back to 100 position just like moving it back in i mean i like it with that big one but i'm just showing you Let, let's just see what it looks like Control and s to save all right let's see yeah it, it reveals it it reveals it that is so cool what do you guys think what do you guys think but i think when it was bigger when it filled out right here this space right here i think that's the advantage of having it bigger so let me just go back and undo that Control and z Control and z i'm just putting it all back the way it was um i can't go back anymore <laughs> no all right let me hit scale all right 276 there i am and then position one two three four five six seven eight all right let me see what i have all right cool all right there we are and that's all that we're going to be doing today oh let me just um use the opacity to fade everything out oh, this wants to go over some more right yes it does all right no what i can do is with everything select Ooh, what's happening there hold on oh i created an extra um, keyframe that's what's happening 
All right, so now what I can do is I can select everything and let it all fade off screen. So Control and A to select everything. And then I can hit T for my opacity tool. Let me just bring this up some more. And then all the opacities are at 100%. I can just click that, move further down in the timeline. I just click the stopwatch to give me a keyframe point, move a little bit further down in the timeline and just change all those opacities to zero. And let's play it now and see what we have. Control and S to save. See that? It's all gone. See? But I think I think the um these dark ones that are coming out, these dark after effects on top and the bottom that are coming out after the fact, I think they may be coming out a little bit too soon. Let me just shift that. I think they may be coming out a little bit too quickly, all right? All right. Yeah, that looks a lot better. And what I can do now for all my keyframes is I can just drag and select, right? And I can just right click and go to keyframe assistant and go to easy easy see that says f9 or i can just select all of them and hit f9 and that will give it a smooth motion so when it's starting to move and when it's almost ready to stop moving when it gets to the second keyframe after effects will let it just gradually slow down right and all i have to do next is add a background to this because i didn't actually add a background the composition had a white background so let me just go ahead and go to layer and then new and then a new solid and you can change this color to whatever it is you want right and that will be the color of the background in your composition here i have white solid let me drag it down to the bottom and then let's play it out and see what i have that's pretty cool and right when it fades out here when everything disappears i just want to like end my work area so this is this top bar here is my zoom bar this second one is my work area right and i want the work area to end right as it all fades out that way i don't have 20 seconds of nothing on my screen right so let me go ahead and yeah so it's set right there to the end let me go ahead and play it and it should re it should just be replaying every time it hits the end of the work area so let's just go ahead and hit space bar to play see that how cool is that that is so cool that is so cool and obviously if you want you can bring an image into after effects here and use as your background right you can do gradient backgrounds you can go crazy but that's all that we're going to be doing today in this tutorial and if i wanted to export this all i have to do is just go ahead and go to file and then export and then add to render queue but what i normally like to do is just add it to media encoder queue right because i like to export with adobe media encoder and when you get when you have premiere pro and after effects you'll know that you get media encoder with them most of the time right and it's, i think i think it comes with it if i'm not mistaken i think it comes with it and all i have to do is just choose my export preset which is normally just like the high bitrate mp4 that's what i want that's fine for me with this project right and i can just scrub through and see what it will look like that looks good for me all i have to do now is just click ok and then choose my export location and then I can just go ahead and hit export. That's all I have to do, right? I can just hit this play button and it will just export it for me and it's already done, right? So that's all that we're going to be doing today. Have you ever used Adobe After Effects before? Know that we've done all that we did today. How confident are you to get started? Let me know in the comments below and thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, my name is CJAM and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you